Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome back. Today, I want to talk about post-lockdown anxiety. But before I do, please smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe and click on the bell to stay notified. And I would like to add thank you to everybody who watched, liked and commented on last week's videos in relation to my story on autism. It's very much appreciated and you've helped to push that content through YouTube by liking it and commenting on it. Okay, moving on. Post-lockdown anxiety. There's a name for everything, but this is not a bad thing. It means things are being recognised. So, we have people out there who just can't seem to be given a break. Okay, uh, so we all got to the point where we started to understand that during these various lockdowns, people just started to suffer with anxiety. Now, some people, during the first lockdown, straight away, the anxiety's kicked in. Because being told you can't go out, being told you've got to stay in your house, being told you can't see your friends and your family was hard on some people. And of course, people mocked, people scoffed, people laughed. And then months down the line, it started to affect more people as they realised that actually this is real, this is genuine, and it's affecting everybody. After that lockdown was lifted, we then went back into another lockdown, and guess what? Maybe the same people were affected again. Maybe they never got over it the first time. But then a whole new set were then affected by anxiety regarding lockdown because now it's happened again. And we lost the ability to say confidently, yeah, this won't happen again. This is the last time. It's the only time. It's never happened before. It won't happen again. Okay? So this happened twice now. And anxiety started to kick in for new people who all of a sudden not so self-assured that this would be the end of it. And we got to the end of that one. It was a bit shorter. Uh, and then we went into it again at the start of this year. And of course, maybe the same people, but also new people again, because it's a third time. And now more people will be going into that level of anxiety because of the uncertainty of when it's going to stop happening. When this cycle of in and out of, of lockdowns is going to end, when they're going to see um, their friends again, is it going to be a long one like it was at the start of 2020 or will it be a, another short one? Because it's gone on for three months and we just came to the point of it being eased, not lifted yet, but eased. So what do we have? We have a lot of people now all over the world in various countries who've had different levels of lockdowns and Lots of those people are going to have been affected by some form of anxiety. Whether it's from the beginning, midway, or towards the end, different people got affected at different times and in different ways. Maybe the triggers were different for people. A lot of people didn't really seem to acknowledge that anything was real until they lost loved ones. Some people couldn't handle not being able to go out and see their family, couldn't handle not being able to see friends. Some people just didn't like being able to not go to the pub when they wanted to. And this is obvious by the number of people who've been turfed out of pubs during the lockdowns. So even people who say they're not affected by it obviously were. Otherwise, they wouldn't blatantly go out and, and breach the policies to do something which, let's face it, the rest of us have gone without. So... It has affected people and their responses have all been different. Some have been to shut themselves in and just go, well, if I'm locked in, that's it. And they've, they've not seen daylight for the best part of a year now, probably. Others, when when they've lifted, they've gone back out. When it's closed, they've gone back in and, and they've restricted themselves during that time. Other people have struggled. Other people have gone in and out of this anxiety. And now we're starting to recognise this post-lockdown anxiety and let me clarify what that is if you've been in prison for a long period of time you can be what people recognize as institutionalized whereas going out to the outside world and being able to be a member of society again can be a very scary and daunting thing it's recognized okay we have now been 
in and out of various lockdowns for the best part of 12 months. And for some people, as I said, they haven't been out much during that. And some, there will be people out there who haven't been out at all for the last 12 months or more during these lockdowns. So for some people, going out is extremely daunting and it builds up that anxiety. Maybe it's just because this lockdown has become their new normal and they've just got used to it. They've spent 12 months getting used to not being able to do the things they used to do. They've just get used to this and now they've been told by, by the powers that be, well now you should get back out, go and meet your friends again, go back into the office and, and all of a sudden what has become your normal life has been turned on its head again. So the anxieties kick in could be for that reason, just because it's a complete change to what has become normal. For others, and, and again, you can look on the internet and you can you can look up uh, post-lockdown anxiety and you'll see people commenting on various sites. You know, what if I go back out to this place and somebody, uh, somebody is infected and then they get me poorly again and, and it spreads and it all ends up going back into another lockdown. People are absolutely terrified of this happening again. And, and it, I'm, I'm not going to say anything about people who are or aren't scared, okay? Because as I said, everybody reacts and everybody is affected in their own way. But we do have this strong possibility now that this could be the last time and we're working towards getting back out, getting back into some kind of um, social life, whether it's at workplaces or, as I said, socialising, or back into restaurants and pubs, and, and you know, the steps have been put in place to do it. Whether you agree with them or not, whether it's because you don't believe in stuff, whether you do, but you think it's too soon. Okay, there's lots of people out there with their own reasons why they will have their concerns. But, we have to understand that everybody will be going through their own thing now. And if you're one of these people, do not feel ashamed to say that you are really worried, scared, anxious. You put your own words on it. But if you are concerned now about leaving your house and going out and meeting people, even within the regulations, then that is for you and it's something that you can address but before you can help yourself you have to say this is how I am feeling because uh, because if you are just trying to cover it up brush it under the carpet but you're still not going out and doing things then you know if you're covering it up you're not addressing it now I'm, I'm not a professional psychiatrist psychologist anything like this I'm just talking as somebody who has students from a martial art class and the things that I see from my students and, and, and you know, of course family okay I, I, I have lost family um, and I know people who've lost family and I know people who haven't been out a lot and they have a lot of anxiety and that's okay that anxiety is okay we, we will find a way to deal with it okay um, and please do do your research. Look up what the symptoms of anxiety are. That you know, the, the panic attacks, the, the the uneven heartbeat, the you know, it starts to go fast. And the panic attacks, um, feeling like it's hard to breathe. You know, and, and if you feel that you're having symptoms of anxiety or, or panic attacks, then you know, please do seek professional help. Speak to a doctor. No one is going to laugh at you. you. You are not on your own and there is help there for you. On the other hand, if you are lucky enough not to be affected and maybe you haven't been affected in any way, you, you didn't feel anxious during this and you don't feel anxious about it being lifted, then please don't make an assumption that everybody is as lucky as you and are not affected. And this goes back to a video I've done before regarding positive, um, toxic positivity. Okay, so just because you're not affected and just because you've managed to maintain a positive outlook, please don't make the assumption that somebody you know who is anxious about it needs to be told all the reasons why they should be happy. Okay, what you need to do is you need to be there for that person, you need to listen to that person, you need to understand their concerns, their fears, their worries and their anxieties. And if necessary, signpost them towards medical help. 
okay? But, as I said, this is all now about being able to have empathy for each other um, and being able to understand and sympathise for people who might be going through something that we are not going through. An analogy I saw right back at the beginning of all these lockdowns was that we are not all in the same boat. We are in the same storm, but we are all in different boats. Some people have weathered this storm in luxury cruise liners and other people who had a sinking dinghy, yeah? And you might have the benefit of having that luxury liner, that's your boat during this storm, but your friend, even if they look all right, even if they're trying to maintain a, a positive outlook, they might be in that sinking dinghy, okay? And you've got to help people through that. And you don't do it by forcing them to be happy because of your circumstances. You've got to understand theirs. So, as I said, with all my students, I'm trying to get people back into training now, back into learning their martial arts again. It's all outdoors now, but I understand that some people are not going to be that eager to get straight back into it. I know there are going to be some of my students who I'm not going to see until we're back in the physical classroom um, and, and running as normal, full contact, and everything else being exactly as it was before. But on the other hand, I know there are those students who are coming back to classes as soon as possible, even outdoors, even with social restrictions, and they're getting on with it. And there is the in-between. There are those people who are turning up but are clearly anxious. And those people, you know, I'm not going to force them. I'm not going to say you should feel this way, you should be pushing yourself. No, do you know what? If you turn up, fantastic, top effort, well done. Do as much as you can. And if you have to bow out and go home and get yourself comfortable again, then that's fine. And do you know what? We can progress slowly. This is why I'm focusing on the students that have remained with me during the course of this lockdown and trying to get them back into their training before I start concentrating on, you know, on, on, on bringing in new students. I need to look after the people who've been looking after me. So, my message for everybody then, plain and simple, you might be absolutely fine, but somebody you know, whether they look like it or not, might be struggling. Please look out for each other. Look for the signs, do a bit of research and, and understand what those signs of anxiety are and be there to listen and if necessary, help them and signpost them. If you are suffering, please, you are not alone. You can seek help and you will not be laughed at by anybody who knows anything. Okay, and if there are people out there who feel that they are laughing at other people for having anxiety, then, you know, maybe you need to do a bit more research and find out more about what other people are going through and learn that empathy, okay? As I said, we all have our own boats and we've all went this done the best we can, everybody in their own way. So, I'll try and keep this video short for today because I did quite a lot in last week's videos, but I am looking forward to seeing more people this week coming back to training and in the next few weeks as we move forward. And until then, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.